Well, I can say that the second print did not turn out as well as the first one. <laughs> uh, now let's figure out why this happened. Good morning, YouTube. How are you? It's good to be here today. Well, my third print yesterday failed on the Neptune. But I don't think that it's uh, the fault of the printer. I think it was also an adhesion issue. I'm not entirely sure. I need to do some digging to figure out why. But also I think I'm going to re-level the bed. I was watching a video where this guy leveled the bed by tightening all of the screws, effectively creating a level plane to work with, and then leveling it that way, doing the manual level that way, bringing it down and making the adjustments. I guess I didn't really have a good baseline for my leveling because I just started leveling out of the box. Logically, that makes sense to like raise it up or lower it all the way down or whatever and create that baseline and then go from there. I just don't necessarily know if that's going to work. But I'm going to try it again because the topographical map is... I mean, it looks like a W. There's, there's some serious dips in this plate. So I want to at least try to get that a little bit a little bit flatter than what it is. Once I do that, then I'm going to reprint. I think I'm going to use glue too. Even though I've got that textured PEI plate, I think I'm going to use glue to try to help with the adhesion issue. I think that's what's happening. I... It always happens when I print something and I walk away. And it seems to happen on the front of the build plate and not really in the center. So I want to actually run this print today and, and I'll be down in the shop and I'll actually watch it to see if it fails. So I'm going to do that and see if I can get these prints to be successful. I did print off a mask yesterday that was successful. I mean, I did it on the A1, and I mean, those things, these Bamboo Labs printers are just, they're rock solid. They're rock solid. I don't really have any issues with them. I can definitely see why people veer away from printers that require you to kind of really tune and dial in certain features and then just go with the Bamboo printers. Like, I can, I can see why people do it because it just works. And there's not a lot of people who want to just tinker and toy around with the printers. But I am a glutton for punishment, and I wouldn't even say that I'm a glutton for punishment. I just I just enjoy the the art of tuning, if that makes any sense. Like even in my day job, like I, I, I do a lot of tweaking and a lot of tuning and I I like efficiency and I like to be able to squeeze as much as I can out of whatever I'm working on. So I did get another printer. Uh, I picked up uh, Creality CR10, what is it, uh, <clears throat> a Pro V2 that needs some work. I think like the firmware was partially installed. So we'll see how that works. But the first thing I want to do is dial in the Neptune and then I'll start working on, on that other printer. And I'll record it because it, it definitely needs some love. So I'm going to try to, again, bring that back to life. It's It's cool because like, I go through the progression of, all right, get the Bamboo Labs printers, which for the most part just work. Sometimes I have little issues, but it's 99% of the time it's me. Actually, 100% of the time it's me. Then I get the Neptune, which is requiring some dialing and tweaking. And then I'm like picking up other printers from like Marketplace and stuff that, that are basically not working, non-functional. And I get to revive those. So... Again, that kind of scratches that tinkering itch that I have <clears throat> while still allowing the printers that I have to just kind of print and do their thing. So I'm going to re-level this, throw some glue on, and start a print and see if I can get it working. Okay, so I've got the final auto-leveling running. I basically reset everything to zero, if that makes any sense. So I spun the, the actual knobs as far one way as they can go without damaging the build plate. Because if you look underneath, the uh, wheels that move the Z-axis back and forth, like 
those nuts stick up really high and I didn't want to like push the build plate down and sma- excuse me, push the bed down and smash it. So so I went down like as far as I could to where I felt comfortable and basically restarted the process again. And I did a manual leveling, auto level, manual level, auto level. I did it like three or four times and I'm doing my final auto level. And it's interesting because if you look in if you look in the UI like you see the topographical map and it looks so aggressive, but I think that it's just like visually it's not as aggressive as you think. Like I've seen videos where people have it pretty damn flat. Mine is not as bad as it was the big W, but I mean, there's definitely dips, but I think I might be worrying about this more than I need to. So once this auto calibration is done, I'm going to, throw a larger print at it. I had this really cool skull and crossbones um, STL that I bought off of cults. And I, I want to print that and see how it reacts because that's the print that I tried yesterday where I had like massive failure and it was basically just spaghetti. So now that I'm down here, I can watch it and I guess we'll see what happens. So it looks like no matter what I do, I've got a dial in the bed and deal with this adhesion issue. Uh, even trying to do some like extruder calibration and stuff like that within Clipper, it, it doesn't work. Uh, I'm constantly getting lifting on the bed. Uh, let me show you here. Like, like it's just not adhering correctly. So now I washed this build plate with soap and warm water i washed it with or i and then i used rubbing alcohol i have not touched the build plate i got gloves over there by the other printers you could see that i've been using i just now did it this way just because i'm annoyed i found this blog post where they were talking about a uh, macro i think it would be called for clipper uh called screw tilt adjust i think i'm gonna try that because from what I gather, what this will do is it will take measurements of where your the knobs are on your bed and then <clears throat> give you the calculation, clockwise or counterclockwise calculation, of what how you need to level it, right? My mesh right now, the bed mesh, is really, really crazy. Like, it, it it's not as aggressive of a, of a W as it was before, but it's still pretty aggressive and... I mean, if I can't do like even simple extruder calibrations or, or nozzle calibrations or, or whatever you want to call it, um, like I, I definitely need to dial in not only the the bed leveling part, but figure out what's going on with this adhesion issue. Like I said, soap and warm water. I let it air dry. I used IPA. So I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to keep digging and figuring it out and I'll let you know what I find. <clears throat> So for me, getting the screw tilt adjust or screw tilt calibrate, whatever you want to call it, squared away, uh, I like to create a separate config file. I don't want to add it to the existing printer config file. You can, it doesn't really matter, but at least for me, I'm doing it this way. So if I do an update, I don't actually lose the printer.config file with the changes. Uh, I actually have that config file on the system. so. Basically, all I'm going to do is create a screw tilt uh, config file. Uh, I'm going to grab the Neptune 4 Max config and dump it in there. I'll save that file. Uh, and then I'm going to include it in the printer.config file. This way, when the system starts, it will automatically consume the values in that printer.config file. And then we should see a new button in the printer or excuse me in clipper for screw tilt calculate so that new button so this is the new button right here okay so a little bit more tuning uh right now i'm doing a flow rate calibration just to kind of see where that is that should be done printing here shortly I mean, 
at least from an adhesion perspective, that looks good. I ended up rewashing the build plate and then using some alcohol, some IPA on the build plate, which is the same thing I do with the two bamboo labs printers I have. And I mean, this looks okay. So I guess we'll wait for this to finish, keep fine tuning and print off one of the bigger prints. Okay, so after hours and hours and hours of tuning, I think I finally got the Neptune 4 dialed in. I'm doing another print right now and it's adhering correctly and I'm not having any weird issues. I took the bed plate off again, soap and water, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. The one thing that I did differently is that I modified the G-code in my Orca Slicer profile to allow the bed to heat soak for 25 minutes before it started to print. I found a video where there was a guy who was talking about weird things that were happening that he was having issues with and he ended up allowing the bed to heat soak for a little bit longer before the print. And I mean, given that I'm gonna be running a print on this printer, larger prints, which will take many, many hours, I mean, it's not a huge deal to add another 25 minutes to the process. However, one other thing I noticed when the failures were happening, I also think it had something to do with the leveling. So the bed, it still isn't completely level. My Z axis, my Z offset was a little bit weird. It was a little bit high. And what it looked like to me was that it was printing higher than it should have, right? The, the bed had maybe a little bit of a bulge in it. But what was catching was the fan shroud on the back, like behind where the, the print head is. So like as the bed would start to move, the fan shroud was like picking up the plastic and peeling it and pulling it. So I think a combination of leveling some more, letting the bed heat soak, fixing that Z offset, I think it might have solved the problem. I'm printing this right now. It's basically just like a skull and crossbones. I want to see if this is successful. But I will say that the fan shroud, where those four, where those fans in the back, the two fans in the back, like it, this fan shroud where it blows air onto the bed, that was basically hitting the plastic and picking it up and dragging it. So I, I think that might have been my issue. Of course, with having the bulge in the bed, it was just kind of picking it up and grabbing it and, and causing that problem. So more leveling, more tuning. I think we're okay, though. I'm going to continue to watch this. This is a smaller print. This is like a two hour print, but it's, you know, it's pretty decent print. And if it's successful, I have a custom design that I want to print uh, that I made for my son that I'll probably end up trying to sell. It might actually be something I try to sell on Etsy. I know I said I wasn't going to do Etsy sales in the um, starting a 3D printing business uh, uh, playlist, but I'm, I'm, I might have to cave and actually do that. And I've got some custom designs that are functional prints that I might put up there just to see, to kind of gauge what would happen there. But yeah, I think I might have solved this problem. So I guess we'll see what happens. I'm going to let that run for the next few hours and hopefully, hopefully we're good. Well, I think all of the tuning and all of the tweaking and all of the work that I've done today, pretty much the entire day, I think it was a success. This last print turned out great. I think, you know, doing the uh, extruder tweaking, um, obviously the bed leveling, doing all of that really, really helped. I think tomorrow I'll start on the larger print. It'll be the big helmet. And I think 
that will really kind of determine whether or not I really did dial this in. This latest print that's been running for a few hours is perfect. I had no adhesion issues, no extrusion issues, extruder issues, however you want to say that. Yeah, I think I think we got this dialed in, guys. I, I know I thought I had it dialed in before and was having weird issues, but I guess really tomorrow will be the sort of definitive, like, yes, you got it dialed in. A little bit of a recap. Not only did I do the manual testing and the auto calibration multiple times, I made a modification to the G-code, uh, the start uh, G-code profile in Orca. Essentially, all I did was add a 25-minute soak. I guess you can call it soak or bake, whatever, but allowing the bed to heat up for at least 25 minutes before the print starts might seem a little excessive, but I think it worked in this case. <sighs> well, uh, that's another one for the books. We will run the larger print tomorrow and see if we can put this weird leveling adhesion issue to rest. But that's it for me. I'm done. <laughs> uh, tomorrow's going to be another long day of potentially tweaking and, and tuning if, if this uh, larger helmet doesn't work. So, all right, that's it for me. Take it easy. Catch you in the next one.